Here, okay, I'm gonna do a quick OBS setup video. This would be a good thing to do on the stream since Twitch changed their broadcasting requirements. And it's not exactly um, easy to figure out how to do it on OBS, though we got there. So I'm gonna talk about all the different settings you need to be have excellent stream quality to Twitch TV, which is the new standard. If you don't have that, you refuse from the ingest. Okay, so just click on settings on OBS, go to settings, uh, general. This is where you can create different profiles, different settings, which isn't a bad thing to do. Um, if you're playing different styles of games, sometimes you want different settings, different bit rates. This is where you create different profiles for that. Uh, encoding. Okay, you have to use CBR coding to stream to Twitch TV now. They switch to a strict CBR. This is the one you want to have. Um, clicking this enable CDR, CBR padding, from what I've noticed, raises your bit rate a little bit, but makes it much more stable. It doesn't jump around as much. Um, I'm using a 2400 bit rate. If you are not a partnered stream, I would not recommend going above 2,000. The higher bit rate you go, even if your internet can handle it, will cause people to lag. And if you do not have quality options on your stream, uh, people leave when they lag. So sometimes you're better off taking a little bit of a sacrifice in quality in order to get more people to watch your stream. Um, the way bit rate works, this is a rough estimate, for every 0.1 upload you have, you have 100 bit rate to work with. You also have to take into account your your audio bit rate, and as well as any fluctuations in your internet. So you don't want to cap out your internet. You probably want to leave yourself about 20, 25% extra on your upload. Uh, audio encoding, the max bit rate for AAC is now 160. Uh, I always use AAC. You can also use MP3. I find AAC to be slightly better quality. 41.41 uh, KHZ stereo is what we're going to use. For broadcast settings, here's the live stream. You can choose which server you go to. I'm on Dallas right now. I also have good luck with uh, Aspirin Secondary, but you can choose any one of these and uh, see how it does for you. Basically, if you're using a server that's farther away, it's probably not going to affect your stream at all other than delay. So, I mean, if I'm trying to route my stream to Europe and back, uh, it's probably going to take longer to get to the people watching the stream. The stream key is how you uh, authorize your stream. To find this, you go to twitch.tv slash broadcast and then click show key and you just copy and paste it in here. And the option to auto reconnect, I don't use that because I think it's kind of silly. You'll see when your stream dies anyways. Video encoding. So you have your video card here. That should be whatever your video card is. Base resolution. This is what the resolution you're going to stream at. So if you want to stream in 720p, you can use 1280 by 720. Uh, you can, you know, 1080, whatever it is. This is the... Um, Resolution you'll stream at. Now, if you have a 1080p monitor and you want to use that and then scale it down, you can use all this. Um, the base resolution is going to start at whatever your monitor is. So if you want to downscale it from there, this is the one you use. Uh, anytime you downscale, you're going to have a little loss in quality from what I've seen. Not usually all that noticeable. Okay, disable Aereo. This is uh, very important if you're going to use monitor capture. There's three types of capture in OBS. I'm going to run over quickly. All you have to do is right-click in your scene. You can use any one of these. There's monitor capture, which allows you to see whatever's on your screen. You can section out a region of that and use that. That's what I'm using right now to show OBS. Um, game capture. I've had no problems with OBS game capture. It's absolutely fantastic. It just allows you to capture the straight game. Um, and there's software capture. It will capture the inside window of whatever piece of software it is. Um, in my opinion, game capture works best for most things, but if you have issues, uh, software capture is the next best option, and then monitor capture. Monitor capture tends to be the most resource heavy, um, and also the least quality. But you still want to disable Aereo. Uh, I, in fact, turn it off on my computer because it just causes streaming conflicts left and right. It's better just to have it disabled and use Windows Basic. All right, for audio, this is where you select your microphone and your, your audio devices. I also have things in here where you can... Uh, Boost your microphone. It's very helpful if you have a quiet microphone. Then advanced settings. Use multi-threaded optimizations. Definitely want to have that on. That's what makes it run so smooth and nice. Allow other modifiers on hotkeys. That means if you have a hotkey in, like, in a game and on OBS for switching scenes, you can use them at the same time. Can cause some conflicts. Okay, let's talk about presets really quick. Okay, the lower your preset is, the more CPU you're going to use because it's compressing the video as it's going out. Unless you have a very nice CPU, you're probably going to be using very fast or faster. Uh, the higher the higher up it is, the you'll get a little more pixelation on your stream, but it's going to use less CPU. So adjust that to your needs and the games. Also, thanks to Tomoreg, who's in the chat right now, 
Um, if you're playing like pixel art games, you usually don't want to use a medium preset because it can actually affect the art of the stream or the art of the game on the stream. Okay, Keyant. It's the one that threw a lot of people, myself included, uh, for the new Twitch broadcasting broadcasting settings. You have to have no more than a two key interval. So how you find this is what you do is you type in here key int equals whatever number you're going to use. If you're streaming at 30 frames per second, key int 60 would be exactly two key intervals per second. The problem is it can fluctuate a little bit. Uh, if you want to use exactly the same amount, you can click the CFR button. I haven't noticed too much of the difference of it, but since I'm streaming at 60 frames per second, we're going to use a key int 100, which will keep us below 2. Um, if you leave this blank, your key int's going to be around 7 or so, and then Twitch will refuse your ingest because you're not using the correct key interval. You just have some other audio settings down here. I have no idea what this does. And then microphone no noise gate. No, I would not like to save my changes. Uh, it's a nifty little thing where you can... Uh, change the thresholds on your microphone. I don't use this myself, but it is nifty if you have a very sensitive mic um, and you don't want a bunch of background noise. And that's it. That's how you set up your stream to get excellent stream settings on Twitch TV so you're not refused from the ingest. It's a quick and dirty guide to setting up OBS. Everything else you can tweak from there, but I hope that's helpful. And that is it.